central terminal, mecca of the traveler, meeting place for lovers, departure point for pleasure seekers, heart of the world's largest city, a romantic, magnificent place to start our story. Like all stories, this one has to have a beginning. So in true storytelling tradition, let's begin with Once Upon a Time, or to be more specific, Once Upon a Winter's Day. Once upon a winter's day, Grand Central Terminal hummed with excitement. The Snow Express was about to depart. From every walk of life, from every section of the metropolitan area came the skiers. There were boys and girls, men and women, novices and experts, all intent on getting away for a day's sport in the great out of doors. Many of these people purchase their tickets in advance, but for those who do not, special ticket windows are set up for an hour before train time, these eager folks gather in this great station, anxious to be among the first to board the train on their way north. In the warm comfort of the Snow Express, pleasure seekers doff their winter togs for a chat and a song as they travel to their destination. Old time friendships are renewed, and faces seen only during ski time are hailed once more as boys and girls meet and compare notes on the long intervening months that have elapsed since last they met. Experts meet the novice, and often as not a future ski champ receives his first pointers from the old timers who come aboard at the first fall of snow. Whether it's a long trip to Cannon Mountain or a short one to the Berkshires, the New Haven provides a dining car. Here, surrounded by fellow skiers, you'll find the lore of the trail the main topic of conversation while the friendly waiters busy themselves taking orders for countless healthy meals. Scenes of winter splendor glide past your train window, and the mountains beckon joyfully to remind you that nowhere does living provide more zest than in New England. Closest to metropolitan New York and to southern Connecticut is the Berkshire area, easily reached on Sundays by the New Haven's one-day round-trip snow train, the Snow Express and the Snow Clipper, as well as by regular weekday schedules. Here is the ideal territory for the beginner, the logical place to perfect his technique before trying his wings of wood on steeper trails. This then is our first stop, our initial jump off into ski land. An example of Berkshire beauty, hospitality, and pleasure is Bosquet. Situated on the slopes of Yoakum Seat Mountain at Pittsfield, Massachusetts, Bosquet offers unrivaled opportunity for the novice or the serious skier to slip away, if only for a day, to another world where relaxation and sport abound. Two tow lines have been installed to speed up traffic for the beginners on Novice Hill making possible an almost continuous flow of uphill bound skiers. Here the beginner finds slopes that he can soon master. Before attempting the steeper mountain trails, it's necessary to learn to negotiate hills like these, where practice makes for the great skill, speed and stamina that's required in the more vigorous exercise of the skiing art. Hour after hour, these enthusiasts ride the tow lines to the top of the hills and ski down, little by little perfecting their technique as well as their knowledge and muscular control. For in no other sport is coordination of mind and body more essential. <laughs> 
You may never care to become a great skier, but you can't overlook the simple beauties of these snow-clad slopes, nor pass up the opportunity to get out of doors at a minimum of expense. on the slopes of Warner Mountain is the G-Bar S Ranch. Here are bunkhouses, a canteen, tow lines and slopes to meet any skier's requirement. Another duplication of the winter pleasures that extend from the Berkshires to Canada. Cross-country skiing is also becoming popular. A cross-country trail connects the Great Barrington area with the Beartown State Forest at South Lee, another popular snow train destination. And when the day ends, you're back in your warm train among congenial companions, headed home. A great experience behind you, new vistas of pleasure ahead. Grand Central Terminal is also the departure point for the New Haven's weekend snow train. The famous Ski Meister and its popular companion, the Eastern Slopes Express. Both of these are all Pullman trains, complete with diner and other accommodations for the skier. It's best to get your tickets early, for when departure time comes, there's a great rush for space, and you won't want to be left behind. Let's climb aboard one of these snow trains and dream of tomorrow's chills, spills, and excitement as the New Haven whisks us north for a weekend in Vermont or New Hampshire or in Canada. Mount Mansfield near Stowe, Vermont, we find an intriguing type of locomotion awaiting us. It's the chairlift, providing another way to get up great in short order. Just take up your position, wait until your chair comes round, and then, presto, you're on your way, thrilling to a magnificent view as you swing up the mountainside. This is the longest single-link chairlift in the world. It is capable of lifting 200 skiers every hour, the 6,330 feet up the mountain, to the hub of an extensive network of ski trails. A skyward trip excels nowhere else on Earth. there are many well-marked trails leading from slope to slope, down the mountains, across the valley. Ski Meister, Toll Road, Nose Dive, and Lord Trail are among the many romantic names given to the ski runs at Mount Mansfield. Once at the top, you choose your down trail. Steep slope, easy trail, or vertical descent. <laughs>
But skiing isn't all luxury trains and dining cars. Getting a toe to the top or picnic lunches, no siree. There's mighty hard work in it for everyone. Not the kind of work you're used to, but hard work just the same. The kind of work that builds mind and body, that trains coordination, that makes for quick thinking and clear vision. This then is the beginner's side. Let's look on while this young lady takes her first lesson from Clem Curtis, well-known instructor at Stowe. Before you attempt to ski, take a lesson or two. You'll soon learn to stand up. And once you've managed that, you start to walk on ski. A neat little trick the first time you try it. But turning around will top your first lesson. So if that's successful, you're off to a flying start. Let's watch as she takes her lesson. Try to imagine yourself in her place. A mere novice on skis for the first time in your life. Fun, isn't it? instructor giving a lesson to a young man who is anxious to learn to swing and turn. Keep your eye on this chap as he makes his debut on a hillside near Mount Mansfield. With ease and grace, Sepp illustrates the turn, swinging his body in perfect rhythm making it seem easy indeed. They stop them young at Mount Mansfield. This line of youngsters is paying strict attention to Sepp as he outlines for them the rudiments of the slalom. A pretty fine piece of skiing when you master it. And master it they will, judging from the looks on their faces. Swing is the thing, and every instructor insists on freedom of movement, on bending the knees and swinging on the turn, all making for perfect coordination when you're on ski. Each member of the class is drilled over and over again before starting the actual slalom trial. They'll find a thousand thrills and a thousand reasons to grow into better men and women because of the happy hours spent on their skis. One of the traditions of this country is the sugaring off party. It's on the schedule for today. And now, with their skis off, young and old alike wait impatiently for the pail of sweet maple syrup that's coming from the kitchen. It's sticky and too hot to handle, but Vermonters and skiers know a quick way to turn it into a very palatable candy. And this is how it's done. Want some? It's easy. Just board a New Haven snow train and come on up into this winter paradise for skiers. You may strike a day when this delicious candy is on the program. It's mush on as a dog team swings round the trail that leads into the hills. A cargo of skiers on their way to the ranch camp begin their exciting journey. It may take a longer time than by ordinary methods, but it's worth it traveling in this fashion. Down through the forests, over frozen streams, up steep and winding trails, round hairpin turns, Teams of Huskies bring this added thrill to the skier. It's another means of transportation in the ever-varying pattern of ski land. went north on into Canada. Reached by the New Haven ski train, this beautiful land vies with our own in providing exciting and exhilarating sport for lovers of the great outdoors. Horse-drawn sleighs await the arrival of the ski train, and throughout the long and rigorous winter,
skiers from far and wide come here to try their skill on these steep slopes. The jingle of sleigh bells provides grand music when you're on a holiday, making for a brand of hospitality that assures a warm and sincere welcome, whether you're a Canadian or a citizen of the United States. Another ski lift offers secure transportation to the top of the mountain. And once more, it's take your position on the right of way and at the right moment sit down, then off you're whisked into the air on the long climb upward. Like their cousins over the border, the Canadians have found that skiing offers an excellent way in which to relax. They've found that once you've mastered the simpler forms of skiing, the more advanced technique comes easily. And soon you're on your way to being a capable skier, commander of yourself and your skis. A lone eagle who can negotiate any trail, any slope. There's a thrill to rushing down the snow trails that cannot be equal. And these northernmost friends of ours set an example of good sportsmanship that all should emulate. Cranmore Mountain near North Conway, New Hampshire, reached by the Eastern Slopes Express, is a delightful place to start another skiing adventure. Here, where the famed ski-mobile is located, gather some of the best known of the experts. Here again, every comfort has been provided. There are rest houses, ski shops, restaurants, and a cozy waiting room, and then, of course, the ski-mobile itself. In front of his shop sits Hannes Schneider, world-famed ski instructor. Let's follow the crowd aboard one of the little painted cars of the ski-mobile. Let's head for the top ourselves, where some pretty grand skiing is in the car. Below stretches the vista of North Conway, where the New Haven ski train has brought us. It is here that such resounding names as Big Ben Slope, Kandahar and Little Kandahar and Rolling Rock Trail beckon. At the end of the ski-mobile ride, Hannes Schneider, originator of the famed Alberg technique, leads a group of skiers to the very top of the mountain, where they'll start their day's instruction. Way back in 1907 at St. Antonam in the Tyrol, Schneider stood erect on his skis, going fast and taking the falls the hard way. He took long, lonely trips through the mountains and because of the terrible falls he encountered, learned to bend his knees and lower the center of gravity. Ballage, as knee bending is called by the skiing veteran, is obtained by bending the knees and pressing them forward, taking the weight off the rear of the skis, thus ensuring better balance and making for better, faster turns. Swing plays an important part in skiing too, for unless one learns early in the game to swing, some hard falls are in store. But bending the knees will help ensure control and balance. Now Hannes is ready to demonstrate the art of swinging and knee bending. It isn't long before the newest Tyro can begin to master the skiing art. For in spite of the air of mystery that some have introduced into this sport, there's really nothing to prevent anyone from becoming a good skier, competent to take any hill. Here's evidence galore. Watch these skiers as they glide along, gracefully executing the turns and swinging swiftly down the steep slope. Here's rhythm that is as swift and easy as the flight of a bird. See how they bend their knees to absorb the shock of hidden hillocks. Watch as they swing from side to side, rounding each sharp curve with ease. And then, someday, try it. Board a New Haven ski train and travel into ski land yourself. Then you too can be wind-born, master of your skis and master of the trails. Each of the skiers in these scenes is an expert who agree to demonstrate what you too can expect to achieve once you've decided to go skiing. Evening in 
the mountains brings a renewal of friendship, an opportunity to talk over the day's sport and a chance to learn of new trails that want explored. You've played hard on the trails, you've learned new lessons and you've had an invigorating experience. Now to relax, to trade tall tales and laugh at the woes of the beginner. Here young people make new friends and share a comradeship that is part and parcel of the fraternity of skiers everywhere. In the White Mountain region of New Hampshire, one of the destinations of the famous train, the Ski Meister, there's a majestic peak called Cannon Mountain. Here nature runs riot, and her wild moods often leave a strange and weird blanket of snow and ice on the trees that makes a magnificent backdrop for the skier's stage. Here's another high spot in skiing transportation, a deluxe sky tram that makes an ascent across the very peaks themselves. You don't even have to be a skiing enthusiast to enjoy this. It's worth the trip just to get this marvelous view. Here's a dreamland for everyone. Scenes unrivaled are disclosed, while the magnificent solitude of the mountain peak makes a wonderful reward for all the patient hours spent in learning to ski. requires the skier to pass between flags set out on a course that sometimes dips almost vertically. It takes consummate skill to negotiate these swiftly required turns. Perseverance and the long struggle to attain perfection of form, a keenly developed mind, and an ability to swing and maintain at all times accurate and precise four lines. Penalties and loss of time are imposed for the breaching of that slalom racing, such as knocking down the flags or failing to go between them. But we're not concerned today with rules and regulations. It's the thrill of watching these artists at play that consumes us. Man, oh man, this is some sport. Slow motion reveals, as nothing else will, the perfect coordination of mind and body. The result of long, arduous hours spent on the slopes, turning and twisting, nearly falling, recovering, spinning down tortuous trails, over bumps, down into hidden gullies, around sharp turns, pointing up the patience that has made the skier the expert he is. This slalom race demonstrates the finest in skiing perfection. Not only the men who have slalom races, here women equal the men in racing skill. It's breathtaking, absorbing and healthy, an exhilarating pastime of unsurpassed pleasure. the day is the race down Cannon Mountain. Here's a whirlwind finish to a thrilling story, a climax of speed and daring that only the hardiest ever attained.
mountains, you've seen the valleys, you've met the people in this wonderland of snow. You've climbed the trails and skied down the slopes. You've heard the call of the hills that brings the thousands who come here every year. Now you too can answer that call. And when next you think of a vacation, let it be a snowcation. So remember the hills that lie so near to you. The hills where winter's mantle rests on the pine-clad slope. Hearken to the call of the trail. And when the snow falls, join the crowds on one of the New Haven Railroad's four ever-popular snow trains. The Ski Meister, the Eastern Slopes Express, the Snow Clipper, or the Snow Express. Then you too can meet health and happiness to clear your mind and ease your heart in ski land. <laughs>